Hey guys, Insomni here with some more AFK Arena. Today we are looking at White Sushi's brand new guide that he just put up on Reddit. So I'll put a link for it in the description. White Sushi makes the most amazing guides that I've ever seen, as well as the stats factor and really the mechanics breaking it down of AFK Arena. So if you have not checked him out on Reddit, go ahead and check out his guides because they can really, really help you with progression. So the guide that he put out recently was on the wish list. A lot of questions come up with the wish list. As you can see here, I completely emptied out my wish list so we could go ahead and look through the heroes and the options that we do have. So he begins the guide with starting with the core heroes, heroes which are too good not to be on your wish list. So in the light bearer section, we do have Lucius, we do have Rowan, and we do have Rose. Big reason, um, Rowan is an energy battery used for pretty much every team. You've used him on most of the boss fights, use him on most of the Twisted Essence. He is a single lineup, amazing. He is the only hero that is non-celestial or hypogen that has a S plus signature item, which is his um, golden bell. Lucius, one of the best tanks in the game, thanks to his support ability, shielding and healing. And Rose is basically steroids for your main energy carry. So when her energy is full, she actually trans transfers it to the hero that she's following, as well as defense and attack rating, making it very, very powerful for that set of heroes. When we look at the Mauler heroes, um, he put Brutus in here. Brutus is a hero that is very, very good because of his immunity shield. Um, not the best, but it's just the vulnerability that really makes his survivability equal to none because he can go completely immune. So if you're fighting a team that has huge, huge burst damage, you can pop him in even at a lower level and he will live because he does go immune. Second hero, definitely 100% agree with, which is Sophia. Sophia, hyper carry with damage and support ability in static field. Great synergy with Eron, which is the team that I have actually built on the pay to win account, if you guys have been following it, as well as Skarath. Support carry, capability of grouping enemies up and dealing damage with his signature item. So having a signature item makes a very, very big difference when it comes to Scrath. So looking at the list, let's continue down to the Wilder Heroes. Wilder Heroes are very, very specific because they have energy. If you've seen some of my Formation Shells guides, they go kind of hand in hand, which is Eron, Hyper Carry, Area Control, very tanky, has dodge, has a super, super strong four second AOE, a slow, it does a lot of damage. A lot of people use him all the way through the chapters, all the way up to chapter 34, which is awesome. He pairs perfectly with Laika. Overall great tank, she has a lot of dodge, as well as a haste buff. Her signature item makes her the best support for agility character carriers because she does agility and she does haste to really boost their damage. Plus she does a um, defense reduction. So her ability actually breaks out 25% of the hero's defense, which is awesome when you're fighting Brutus, when you're fighting Golas, when you're fighting heavily armored tanks, she can actually get through them. Which brings us to Tassie, one of the best support CC with haste buffed. Her sleep has an AoE and she has a single banish. So not only does she have two forms of CC, she produces haste, or she can actually take haste away from the enemy or debuff the enemy that she follows, as well as her signature item has the ability to, to remove attack rating by a certain percent, which comes hand in hand again with the shell of Tassie comes Nemora. Charm is amazing paired with some heist for, from some haste with Laika. Although her heal is mediocre, She's a hero that a lot of people have begun to phase out just because of her healing ability. Has to have her ultimate go off to really, really be effective, even with her signature item, because I believe it is based off damage or attack rating, which she does not do much of either. And then, of course, in the wish list to finish it out, you have Soros. Soros is the king of all boss fights right now, whether it is the guild boss or it is twisted essence bosses. If you're looking to build up a good supply of Juice for your tree, you have to have Saurus or you have to be able to borrow Saurus because he is that powerful. In the Graveborns, the must-haves are the two main carries. Pharrell, which is definitely one of the best support carries. He drains energy, he reduces damage, he stuns, and he interrupts. Very, very powerful class. And of course, we have Nara. 
single target crowd control, decent damage output and survivability. She can shut down a hero that she as is completely opposed to it. So as the guide continues, um, always get the question, when a hero hits ascended, should you take them out? It, it, there's really two main factors that Sushi covers. When a hero goes from ascended to one star, they get 2.5% stats. When they go from, let's say, Mythic Plus to Ascended, they get 20% bonus. So the 2.5 is nice to have, but getting heroes to Ascended is what really makes the difference. For tanks or a carry, the stats can help you survive a little bit longer. Support doesn't benefit from stars. Again, support doesn't really benefit from stars, but if you do care about PvP, the first thing you want to do is get 15 heroes to Ascended, so not worrying about stars until you get your base 15 down. Um, is there any better alternative to swap in? If you have all the core heroes built that are starting to build rain, do you have the fodder for her? Do you have the copies for her? Like we've said before, when it comes to a hero, there's really two tiers you want to take the hero to. When you're getting them and getting copies out of the wish list, is taking them to Legendary Plus. At Legendary Plus, you can still use them for food at other heroes um, or a hero that you're going to get up. Once you have them at a Legendary Plus, it's good to have two Elite Plus copies of them. That way, when you get enough food, you can take your Legendary Plus hero to Mythic, Mythic Plus, and Ascended all in one shot as long as you have the food for them because you already have the two Elite Plus copies, which is just kind of a rule of thumb because essentially if a hero gets a rework if a new hero comes out if there's someone who you're going to prioritize over the hero at legendary plus you are already building you can go ahead and prioritize the new hero so let's look at the rest of the slot so as we go ahead and fill up our team some heroes to definitely have in here these are contenders as you're getting these heroes up to ascended which is always gwyneth Gwyneth provide, provides a continuous DPS, meaning that it does damage over time. Her flaming arrow is very, very powerful, and she has CC, which makes her, again, very, very powerful. Her plus 20 signature item allows her to attack twice when a hero alts. So any team that has the twins, that has Rowans, that has the ability to alt faster, she will benefit from. Other one is Belinda, who does really, really well. Strong carry, but mostly used due to players getting so many free copies of her. That's really the big thing with Belinda is you get a lot of copies, especially when you start the game. I believe on day number seven, you get an Elite Plus copy of her. So they give you a lot of copies and you pull a lot of copies. She can be bought in the store. That's one of the big things. When you look at Belinda, when you look at Rose, when you look at Falks, Falk's hard, hard single target CC and group cleanse. His group cleanse also does give a defense buff um, as he cleanses from the enemy. So his signature item is pretty solid. And then the other hero that we really look at in this class is Cecilia. Support carry with strong damage reduction, amazing for bosses. Should get her elite plus, at least for the Abysmal Expedition. She was the hero that actually carried everyone in the ranger tree to be able to do enough heroes. When you look at some of the other heroes in here, Oscar, Rigby, Henrik, Thane, um, a couple of the other ones, they're far, far down the road, Estrilda, Rain. So focusing really on the core light bearers that we talked about is the heroes that you really, really want to focus on. So looking at the Maulers, we always do have Warwick. Warwick, again, you can buy from the shop. Mediocre tank, but his debuffs and positioning, he is absolutely a monster to maximize your damage on bosses because he has a big defense reduction, which is very good, as well as Scrag. Scrag, very, very tanky. Knockback, does some CC. Really, he's just there to hold heroes is really the only thing that I have seen him for. Titus is another one, dodge tank with great damage output and good for sniper targets in the right lineups. Titus is very, very hard to get to live. If he is exposed to the enemy back line, he dies relatively easy. And then the other one that I'm kind of on the fence is Nemitsu. The thing with the Maulers is Nemitsu is the only support class. And with the support class being very, very powerful in the Elder Tree, Plus he has the distraction of his totems, which makes him decent. And that's why if you've even watched my Mauler team, um, I do keep him in for a lot of the campaign stages because of the distraction being so powerful for him. 
So looking at our Wilder Heroes, as you can see, we have a pretty solid team. There are two other Wilder Heroes that you really want to focus on, which is, of course, Gorvo. Very tanky with a signature item, has a lot of CC, both PvE and PvP progression. He does very, very well. And the other one that really does well is Solus. Solus is another hero that I've put into my Wilder team. Amazing early game carry. She is perfect for the faction towers. Um, it's just inconsistently for PvE because you have to keep her Floral Spectre up if you want to maximize her damage, which a majority of the time, they kill the Floral Spectre first. So looking at our Graveborn heroes, there are a couple other ones that we want to go. This is kind of the strong contenders for tier slots, but not the priority that Pharrell and Nara are, which is Thorin. Amazing tank can buy you a lot of time. You do have to kill him twice. And if you're going for Thorin Cheese, 100% Thorin. He is another hero that you can get from the shop as well as Grez. Grez does have the ability to heal himself where the Graveborn does not have a support class at this time. So he does have the ability when his minion dies to heal himself. Um, great tank. A lot of people have used him against um, different bosses. Great synergy with Saurus because you can keep all of the adds up with Saurus's signature item with the heal that he does. And the final one, of course, we cannot leave out a Shamira. She is easily the best carry in the game. Um, early game, mid game, the lab, Dark Nomura, there's a lot of places that she is utilized just because she is such a powerful, powerful hero. Now there are a couple of heroes that are kind of the niche heroes. So as you look through here, um, two that we have here that I've really noticed are Kasos. Kasos with his rework and his ultimate ability, he does a decent amount of damage, but his survivability is not there. Skarath outperforms him relatively in every aspect, especially with the CC and the, the pulling together the mobs for Sophia makes a very, very big difference. And the other one is Verk. Verk does a lot of damage, but again, Skarath seemed to replace Verk. Um, I know I do have Verk at SI30 and he does a lot of damage. So just an honorable mention to put in there as kind of an additional lineup hero. Um, Anoki, still kind of a little bit too early to test. I absolutely love him on my Mauler account. Um, the same with Torn. When you look at the Graveborn team and looking at Torn, relatively too early to test. Not many people have met five stars with his maximum signature item, really finding out where he's gonna fit. Another one is Baden. Um, borderline filler heroes, not quite usable for PvE progression. They're good on bosses and they do have their niche slots, just like the Wilder hero, which a lot of people build, which is Lorzen. Um, Lorzen, again, kind of has his spot. Um, niche in a couple of places can be good in the Wilder Tower, depending on who you're kind of fighting. So as we continue to look through the guide, so an example wish list, and I'm just going to build the one that Sushi offers here, would be again Rowan, Lucius, and Rose, as well as Gwen and Belinda. The reason you might find it weird that he's recommending two carries, it's because Gwyneth is so good to build her early, and Belinda is a staple in most teams. So when you look at my primary account, I used Belinda all the way into chapter 20, 27, chapter 28, when I hit that point and finally got Gwen enough, high enough to be usable, when I swapped Gwen out for Belinda, we pushed chapter eight, chapter nine into chapter 30 because she is such a powerful, the continuous damage versus the burst damage of the two heroes. Gwyneth definitely does more damage because she can hit more targets and she hits them super fast. Where Belinda is just using her regular attack to build up energy, Gwyneth is already doing damage to multiple enemies, which is super, super powerful. For the Mauler team, Brutus, Sophia, Warwick, which we'll swap in here as well, Nemitsu, and Skrath. Nemitsu, again, some of the heroes like Nemitsu and um, Warwick you can buy from the shop, so they're very, very easy to get to Ascended. At the point of Ascended, you can go ahead and drop them out of the list. Wilder team, again, Eron and Laika are the two main carries. We do have Namora and Tassie. Again, Namora is a hero that you can swap out a little bit, but she does have pretty good synergy with her Beguile ability. Um, but overall, this is the Wilders. So when you start, 
if you're starting early or starting even a new account, putting this specific comp, I, I guess team comp, um, in there is going to yield you great, great results. So again, Nimitsu kind of looks like a little, a little odd, but again, for having Mauler support, especially pushing the towers, this wish list lineup will serve you very, very well. When your heroes are hitting Ascended, swapping them out, because remember, getting Ascended and getting to Ascended with one star is 2.5% versus having your first 15 heroes Ascended. And I know White Sushi's other guide always says at about 12 Ascended heroes is when you want to start doing stargazing because you want to make sure you have two or three heroes of each faction. That way you can start pushing the towers, getting stargazer cards, and really getting into the stargazer overall. So he goes into great, great detail about the wish list. And like I said, I will put a link. There is statistical, a ton of statistical information that wish list heroes are completely guaranteed and kind of how it breaks it down into when you have heroes in the wish list. Always make sure your hero, your wish list is full. If you leave a slot like this empty, this will pull any hero, including just the rare heroes from the fodder. It'll go ahead and pick up heroes. Of course, you have your, I believe, 0.02% for the celestial or hypogen heroes, which do not make a difference if the wish list is empty. So you always want to make sure that your wish list is filled with primary heroes and you have all 20 heroes in here. That'll give you the greatest success to building your teams and building them quickly. So again, when it comes to the statistical information, White Sushi is absolutely on point, does a phenomenal job with the guides, and I love covering them. So if you want to see how the stats break down and a little more into the wish list guaranteed, again, I will put a link to his video right in the bottom. So let me know what you guys think. It, it's a ton of information, but just a little breakdown of the wish list. It's good to see because a lot of people have a lot of questions and White Sushi comes up with a solution where these questions are not easily answered or a lot of players are just completely unclear of the process or how the wish list exactly, exactly works. So again, thank you. Big shout out to White Sushi. Big shout out to Casuals for all that you guys do and all of the data information, statistical analysis, and all of the breakdown. Very, very cool to see. So again, let me know in the comments what you guys think. That is White Sushi's guide on the wish list. In a nutshell, there is a little lot more information in there when it gets into the actual stats. And as always, thank you guys for watching.